Well, good morning, Terrace Pentecostal Assembly. Welcome, everyone, to our second online service. just want to share a couple announcements with you, and then we'll dive into the message. Uh, the first announcement is that our associate pastor, Andrew and Melissa, and their children, Eliana, Nora, and Enoch, uh, they moved into their house. They've been able to purchase a house, uh, even in the midst of this troubling time. So that's a praise report. So thank you so much for your prayers. And the second thing is that Pastor Andrew and I have been working through the church directory, just phoning everybody. So if you haven't received a phone call in the next couple of weeks, uh, please contact Nancy in the office at uh, 635 We want to make sure we have the right information for you. And the last thing is, is that we are putting this video up on uh, TPA for our congregation, uh, the TPA Connect. We'll also put it on Terrace Pentecostal Assembly, kind of for the public. And then we'll also put it on our church uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Nancy in the office will be emailing this out, a uh, YouTube link to everyone. So if you don't receive an email, I want to encourage you to contact Nancy as well and let her know that uh, your email is not correct. We just want to make sure that we're communicating well with you. And the last thing is, uh, kind of what kind of things are we doing during this time? I'm in isolation still uh, for another week. <clears throat> so as a, as a father and children, uh, paper airplanes is a big thing we're doing right now. Uh, obviously, to kill some time, we've got uh, some puzzles happening. Those are a good thing to do. I remember when I grew up in Prince Rupert, <clears throat> we'd go to my grandparents' cabin at Babbing Lake and we'd play cribs. So that's always fun. <clears throat> and then last thing is you need to probably dust these off out of your cupboard. And I'm not doing a promotion for this company here, but... Uh, you know, good old-fashioned gel. It seems like everyone's got some of that in their cupboard, so we're making some of that during this time. I just want to encourage you, let's get our Bibles out this morning. I know you're probably at home in your jammies, you're relaxing, <clears throat> got a cup of coffee, but uh, somewhere in your house I'm sure there's a Bible, so let's go find those and make sure we've got them open. We're going to be looking into uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, I think ever since this uh, outbreak has occurred, uh, people have been reading the scripture, probably the most read scripture right now on the internet. So let's read it together. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So I have two thoughts about this. And the first thought is that, is this the best verse in the whole Bible that we have to offer people right now in this time? And I think the straight answer is absolutely yes. Um, I want to talk about a second point here in a second. But let's read it again very slowly. For God has not given us a spirit. Let's just stop right there. For God has not given us a spirit. So that means he's given us a spirit. And what kind of spirit has he given us? If we think about uh, Jesus Christ uh, when he hung on the cross, uh, that he died uh, for our behalf, on behalf of our sins. And that same spirit, it faced death. And that same Jesus faced death and he overcame death. And that's the kind of spirit that God has given us. A spirit, an overcoming spirit. If we were to continue to read, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Think about that fact that Jesus Christ, again, faced death, he faced Hades, he faced hell, and he overcame it. <clears throat> that was a frightening place. I mean, I can't imagine that. Uh, probably a terrifying time. But as we read, he overcame that. So let's read it again and go a step further. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power. Ooh, there we go. God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. He's given us a spirit of power. And power to overcome fear and timidity. Well, if I think about fear, a uh, pretty common, pretty uh, well-used word. I think I understand that fear uh, is terror, uh, dread, panic, alarm, any kind of, however you want to look at that. And then timidity. Listen to what it says uh, if you were to look it up. What's the meaning of that? The lack of courage and of confidence. Oh, in a time right now, we need courage. We need to be encouraged. And we need to be confident in our, in our God. Uh, with, you, know, you can easily turn on the news and, and not feel super confident in the things that are going on. But we are confident because God's given us a spirit of power uh, to not be fearful and to not be, have, uh, be timid. 
Let's continue to read that verse a little bit further. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love. Then a spirit of love. So we've got power, we've got love, to love those around us, even when they're unlovable. I think we all need that sometimes. What is concerning to me as I uh, watch the news every day and, and get updated on things that are happening is that just the sadness that I see uh, for the medical staff that are overseeing people with this virus. That, you know, typically you would be able to go in as a loved one, as friends, um, and visit and see people. But because of the virus, you're not able to do that. So the medical staff are usually the last ones uh, seeing people pass away. And how tough that is and how trying that is. So let's continue just to finish this verse off. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and of self-discipline. A spirit of self-discipline. What does that look like? It says here, if we were to Google it and look it up, <clears throat> the meaning is the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses. Oh, man, we need that again, don't we? Self-discipline. The ability to control one's feelings when our feelings are led us all over the place. All kinds of feelings, all kinds of different emotions right now. And to overcome one's weaknesses. Oh, we have uh, great weaknesses as just human fleshly beings. But the spirit of God that lives inside of us uh, helps us to overcome our feelings, overcome our weaknesses. That's wonderful news. It also goes on to say the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. So the spirit of God gives us the ability to to stay steadfast, to stay on the rock, to stay focused on our God, even despite temptations maybe to abandon it in tough, tough times. What a wonderful scripture that we don't ever want to forget about. But again, like I said, I want to take it a step further and think about it in a different light. So for those of us that are maybe new to the faith as I was years ago, maybe new to scriptures, maybe even new to a sermon, new to preaching, uh, this Maybe the first message you've ever listened to online. Now, these scriptures are super helpful. You need to know that God wants to give you something. He wants to give you a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. But the, for those of us that have been around the church for a long time, um, we know the scripture. We know many scriptures like that. And I believe that this is an elementary teaching, that kind of scripture. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. That's an elementary thought. We understand that. We know that we've got the power. We've seen it in, in action. Uh, we have testimonies. We have stories. We've seen God overcome all kinds of situations for us. So I want to go again a step deeper now. So let's look before and after that scripture. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 says this. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of, of my hands. So God has given you a gift, and what are you going to do with that? So often we just focus on the verses that, you know, kind of sound nice and we need to hear, but God is kind of calling us up. He's challenging us to, to go further. He's wanting us to mature. So i, I got to be honest with you, I find it pretty difficult to focus on working on sermons. I'm so used to, I'm such a routine guy, you guys know me by now. Uh, usually Saturday night I have dinner. Uh, then I go to the church office, start working on my sermon, putting in the last kind of final touches to it. You know, I'm out of the house, I'm surrounded by my books in my office, complete silence. You know what that's like for those of us that have children. Uh, with all my notes that I've been gathering through the weeks and months before I actually preach the message. Uh, routine, out the window. Uh, my wife, Amelie, stopped working and has put together a weekly schedule so she can begin homeschooling uh, starting tomorrow, our children. Lots has changed in a short time. I remember I just left for New York with my son Moses on a father-son vacation. Uh, and today, wow, well, that's not even something you can comprehend or think about. You can't even fly a little alone think about going on vacation right now. I tell you, I seriously miss, I think about uh, Pastor Andrew. He just came on staff and he's been in the office this past week and I haven't even been there. So we've talked every day on the phone, but I miss that. I want to be there. Uh, I miss Nancy just uh, in the front office, you know, how valuable she is. I just love uh, connecting with her. Uh, I really miss talking with Brenda, just kind of going over numbers and, and talking about finances. And uh, I miss Chris and Eric. 
uh, just walking through the building with them, making sure it's all looking good, everything's fixed up. And I honestly miss seeing each of you. Staring at this phone is completely awkward. I'm imagining that you're there, imagining that you're out in the congregation, you're wherever you are right now. Uh, we're all facing similar situations as not much is very normal anymore right now. I, I don't know, I've never been isolated, I've never been in, imprisoned in a sense in my own home, in my own country, in my own town. Even though things are tough and difficult right now, God has given us, he's given you a gift. He's asking you to fan, fan it into flame. He's, he didn't talk about the situation or the context in which he gave you the gift or the time on when he gave you the gift. He just said, I've given you a gift and I want you to fan it into flame. I want you to mature in it. I want you to grow into it. So let's read after that verse of so 2 Timothy chapter 7 or chapter 1 verse 7. So we're going to read after that verse and we'll read verses 8 to 10. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. This is Paul speaking. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us for a holy life. Right there. He saved us and he's called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we've done. Oh, that's such good news. Eh? The stuff that, that we've done or I've done uh, is not going to be a holy life. But because of him. We're able to have a holy life that he's called us to. goes on to say, not because of uh, his own purpose and grace. The grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Who's destroyed death? We don't need to be fearful of death or of passing away because God's overcome that and he's brought us and given us a gift of life. He's brought us to immortality, into the light, through the gospel. That's just great, great news. So what do we do? What does the next few weeks and months look like uh, for each one of us? Let's look at an overarching theme that we would see in the New Testament. Again, let's just kind of pull away from the New Testament and just look at some overarching ideas in there. If we look at the beginning of the New Testament, look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we see Jesus walking around. We see that uh, it was a tough situation, tough times, and Jesus was still able to do ministry. Then if we look at the majority of the New Testament, the uh, uh, that Paul wrote about or wrote the books. We see that Paul, you know, was in difficult, his life was in danger, and he was able to still do ministry even in those difficult times. So in today's settings, how can we still do ministry? Uh, can still be the church? Can we, can we still love God in these times? Uh, Pastor and Angie and I have been working through the phone directory, as I mentioned earlier. I gotta tell you, I'm very encouraged by the cheerful attitude that I've been hearing in the midst of these difficult times as I get you on the phone. There's only one reason that is, and it's because of the scripture we've just been reading. It's because you have a spirit, you have a gift that God gave you that you can have that kind of an attitude. You can't have that without God uh, that's inside of you. So in the midst of darkness, uh, we can still come above that in a sense again, we can look at it in a different light and we can bring light uh, into the darkness. So when it's dark out, we're called to bring the light. Here's my challenge to our church. Let's pray and connect with every person in our community. Every person. Now, that seems challenging, doesn't it? There's a battle going on for every person's soul in our community and in the world. And I kind of sense that if you think about the enemy and his strategic ways that he's having a field day with all this fear and worry and anxiety that is put upon people. Some of you are working in the essential sector and really you're going to battle each and every day because you're putting yourself out there and potentially you could get the virus. I just want to thank those that are doing that. That's massive. Uh, the message hasn't changed. Our prayers haven't changed. And my challenge to us, again, is the same. Pray for those around you. Pray in your workplace. Pray over your neighborhood. That people would come to a personal relationship with Christ Jesus. 
because the cheerful attitude you have, the ability for you to be able to overcome and oversee the darkness and the challenges that we face is because there's a spirit of God living inside of you and other people need that. So what are we really called to do as Christians? Some of us can't work and uh, I feel like personally, you know, kind of like, where's my calling? Where's my purpose when you can't go to work? Are we called now in this season to refocus? We're really called to refocus on what's important, what we're really called to do. How, what does it really mean to be Christian? How do we truly live that out if we can't meet anymore? Let's be honest, we cannot physically meet in a church building right now. Um, but we still have everything else we need. We've got the Bible, we've got prayer, we've got the Spirit of God, we've got everything that we need. Let's look back to the beginning of this year. If we look back at the beginning of 2019, you remember we had 24 hours of prayer and fast. You know, 60 plus people signed up. It was a wonderful time of praying and fasting. I feel like God answered a ton of prayers. Uh, God is moving in a mighty way. We came to our AGM. What a time of celebration. Well, AGM was a great time, exciting time. Uh, we just found our associate pastor. That's an answer to prayer. It all came together quite quickly and so on and so forth. Good times and good feelings. God's on the throne and I can trust him. How do you feel in the midst of one of the world's greatest tests right now? What's going on right now for you? Good feelings gone. Can I still trust God? Is he still in control? We have two options. We can believe in fear and worry and anxiety. Or we can trust God. If you believe that he's still worth trusting, then what are we going to do again right now? It's my question I keep coming back to. We need to shine. We need to let our light shine. It seems like a Sunday school song. I won't sing it for your sake. Uh, Pastor Andrew, uh, the board, the leadership, the team, uh, the leadership team, and I have been looking at ways that we can be Christ, not just in these moments, but in the months and years to come. As a church of a couple hundred people, we can really bless and make a difference in our community. And I totally believe that. Now, I challenge you, how can we connect with every person in our community? Let me just do some numbers and facts, because that's the kind of person I am. Is that there's about 18,000-ish people in the Terrace and the Thornhill area. Again, if there's around about 200 people attending our church regularly, um, that call TPA, Terrace Pentecostal, their home church, that's about 90 people each. So we can quickly do the math there. Let's think about if this virus lasts for at least three months here. So if we're responsible for 90 people each over three months, that's 30 people a month. That's one person a day. Do you feel that we can connect with our whole community? That if each one of us took one person per day to just phone, uh, to pray for, to reach out to. I know that we got to do social distancing. I'm not telling you to break that rule. But there's ways that we can connect with people like we are right now through social media watching this video. There are ways that we can make phone calls to people. And to seriously phone them, say, how are you doing? What's going on? And to say, I'm going to be praying for you, just so you know. And then pray for them, seriously. Don't just say that, actually pray for them. People are facing a battle for their lives. This is a wonderful opportunity. I don't want to just take advantage of in the short term. I want to think long term that we continue to act and be uh, the feet of Christ. We take the gospel uh, everywhere we go. We've got our faith. We've got our salvation. We've got hope in Jesus. We, we can see above this situation. We're going to grow and mature in our walk and our faith as Christians in these troubling times. I just believe that with all of my heart. Would you say amen to that? So in these moments, I, I thank you for listening. Uh, it's a pleasure to always be able to connect with you. And I love you. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, just so you know, next week I'll be able to actually get into the office. So uh, this will be the last video from my guest bedroom. So appreciate you guys. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.